being a, a medical doctor who graduated from medicine, and I decided to change dramatically, but had to leave practice. So a lot of questions are coming in that I relate to a lot because my I, my, my my dad's a physician. I've been uh, trained around physicians, and so this idea of not um, robots never being able to do what we do is huge. And so we, we there's a there's a mix of questions that came in and. Um, I want to share some of the comments first. Some of them answer each other. Interestingly enough, um, someone anonymously said, and you know, you, you mentioned there are critics, and I think Ali, you have critics because you are pushing the envelope, right? You are doing something that hasn't been done before. Um, but one of one of the questions was um, someone asking about how uh, two two years ago you predicted or you said that um, the that there's going to be an order of magnitude um, more accuracy in in, uh, in 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 a software than human doctor, and whether whether you said that or not, uh, it, there's an interesting uh, quote that came in that actually uh, is from uh, Dr. Khalil Abdel who is uh, the moderator of uh, last session, and um, he at in the last Hims conference uh, he was representing the chapter there and heard an interesting quote that he shared with us, which says that. Doctors, AI is not going to replace doctors, but doctors that don't use AI are going to be replaced by other doctors that do. And so a big question uh, for you, Ali, and um, you know, I want to share the results of the poll too, um, just because it factors in as well. So it seems like people are 50-50 on the success stories of AI. Um, most people have not interacted with an AI system, and that's from a group of people that are very digitally oriented and, and, and forward thinking. Uh, most people also seem to think, think that the, the best application of AI is in prevention rather than diagnosis. Um, and that brings me to the question around adoption from, from physicians specifically, Ali. Um, how are you seeing that change over the years? Are you uh, seeing less resistance and especially after COVID, are you seeing a change in any way? So let me ask you something, Omar. If you asked your father and the physicians you know, would you consult a patient from a screen three months ago? What would they have said to you, by and large? No, a lot of, especially my dad's a surgeon, so he believes in the human touch uh, more than probably other doctors too. Right. Um, but, but also a lot of doctors that are even dermatologists think it was a good idea, but were reluctant to use it especially three years ago, three months ago. And today, almost every interaction in medicine is on the phone or on the mobile, on, on this, right? Overnight, overnight, right? Because it was a cultural issue. And when the necessity came, as a doctor, and vast majority of doctors are in the profession because they want to help and care, when they saw that there's no other way to help the patients, they did it that way. And I actually, I know many doctors who say that it's just absurd to go the other way, right? I mean, and just think about this. Just, just take this for a moment and think about it. You are, you are a clinician yourself, right? So you say, I need to see a patient when they're very ill. That's great. But now think about that patient when they're very ill. They're sitting in bed, they're running a temperature, that head hurts, they're sweating like crazy, and you want them to make an appointment to come and see you, maybe wait two, three, four, five days in the UK, maybe up to two weeks, right? To come and see you, get on a bus, right? Maybe infect a whole bunch of other people, come and sit in your practice who might have somebody with another infection in it and they have to wait until they come and see you, feeling that way, and then come and see you. And then you say, that is a better thing for that patient. Did you ask that patient whether that's a better thing for them? I think we do that very little in healthcare, especially as doctors. We always know best. How much do we think about humans' experience, right? So I think we we need to think really seriously about this. That people, when uh, all the critics on us didn't start because of our AI, it started when the British government said we can become the physician of people, and people have to choose whether they want their existing physician or they want to switch to us. And that's an unfortunate quirk of the British system that you can't have two GPs, you have to choose one. And all your money goes with it. And what we saw was thousands of people a week switching, something that nobody believed it would happen. And, and that basically means people's livelihood get affected, right? People switch. 
But, but why were they switching? They were switching because it was a better model of healthcare for them. Is it a better model of healthcare for everybody? Absolutely not, but it's a better model of healthcare for them, right? Uh, so many people make evil out of Amazon, but if Amazon is so bad, why are so many people switching to it? Why are they using it, right? So the, because it's better for the consumer, for the user, right? So I, I think the question you're asking, its premise is wrong. Because it's saying that the person, I mean, let me just depersonalize this. It's like asking the librarians whether Google would have been the right model of distribution of information back in 95 to 97, 98, right? It really was in, interesting what the librarians said, but it's much more important what the users said, right? And I think uh, the best doctors I know think that way. Well, the answer I just gave you is not my answer is the answer of the hundreds of doctors who work for us. We are the largest employer of doctors, GPs in Britain. Uh, uh, and that's their answer. That's why they work uh, with us. There isn't a human being who can beat chess, uh, an AI in the game of chess, right? But there is also no game of, ch uh, no AI who can beat the combination of a human being and AI in the game of chess, right? Uh, and I think that combination is good. And for now, and for the very foreseeable future, we do not think that having a machine that can, we think that the machine can diagnose you maybe uh, properly and better than a doctor at some stage, but we don't think a machine can put its hand on your shoulder and say, trust me, I'll take you through this, right? Uh, and so there is a role for a human being that we are a very long way before we see a machine. So, so we should stop looking at this as a combat we should look at it as, look, half of the world population have no access to healthcare. There is no equity in healthcare. Zero, none. What are we going to do about this? How long are we going to watch people die while we sit and protect the existing system? It's criminal to, it's to, to support a system that has left so many behind.